We'd like to welcome the international congregation from around the world. Children of the We're glad you're with us this week. We know you'll be watching this message all week around the world. So it might be morning, it might be night. So we're just, we're glad you're with us. Uh, we want to welcome uh, the house churches locally, nationally, and internationally. We are praying for you today. You're awesome. So just know that we're not just going to pray for you Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We're going to pray every day. Amen. Everybody take five minutes a day and just pray for these house churches locally, nationally, and around the world. Um, because things are just getting ready to break out in a good way. Uh, last week's message was pruning produces gentleness. And I know all of you are super gentle this week and kind and didn't get upset. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Tony, right? All right. Okay, good. Awesome. All right. So the message worked. It worked. So um, last week's message was pruning produces gentleness. So if you missed that message, it's at Last Days Harvest Ministries, and that's our YouTube channel. Make sure you put Last Days Harvest Ministries. It's the only one on YouTube with ministries. So make sure you put it all there. There's a lot of Last Days stuff. Um, we want you to be able to find the channel. So this week, we're going to go a little bit deeper. We've spent nine weeks. Nine weeks. So if you missed any of the services, they're all there. There's over three years of services on YouTube. So if you're starting a house church, there's over three years of services there for you to use, but we do a new one every week. So there's, there's plenty of material there. So an easy topic tonight, pruning produces self-control. Oh, yeah. I know this might not be the right crowd to talk about self-control. You've got it all together, but just pray for the people online. Amen? Yeah. All right. You got to loosen them up a little bit. So we're going to be talking about one of your favorite topics, self-control. So the definition of self-control, the ability to control one's self. This is a huge definition. I'm a definition guy. I was like, wow, this is like a paragraph definition. To control oneself in particular, one's emotions and desires or the expression of them in one's behaviors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean I got to be self-controlled in the way I behave? You betcha. When I was young, one of my uncle's best friends, C.B., uh, handle was you betcha big lifted forward big antenna and you betcha on there <laughs> I just thought you needed to know that yeah, okay. this is this is very deep information you betcha. <laughs> self control the ability to control oneself in particular one's emotions and desires or the expression of them in one's behavior, listen to this, it gets better, especially in difficult situations. You and Christ in you should excel in difficult situations. People should be able to stand on the side, not even know you, never met you, and see a difficult situation, and angels are singing. <laughs> the choir's going. Because you're just speaking love. Oh, amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. All right. That, that's the goal, right? Self-control. How many of you have gotten out of control and started saying something and it went from bad to worse? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of us. All of us. Slow to speak. Quick to listen, right, Chris? Chris, I talk to people when I get to know them, so don't take it personal. So, Chris, we got two eyes, two ears, one tongue. 
So that, that, now, I'm just an old farm boy from Doris. I might have been born at night, but it wasn't last night. That just an old farm boy could know. I got to watch twice as much. I got to listen twice as much. And I got to talk half as much. <laughs> but a lot of times, our little tongues do way more than twice as much. Right. Okay, this is for the people on camera. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, let's look at some scripture, okay? And if you don't have a Bible, it's fine. I'll, I'm going to read it to you. And so we're going to go to the big book of Titus in the New Testament. Titus has got some good stuff in here. You should put your, put your peepers on it once in a while. Amen? You don't know what the title is, Judy? Uh, pruning self-control. Self yes, pruning produces self-control. Uh -huh. We need some production, amen? So Titus chapter 2, a lot of you haven't looked at this book before, or rarely, so it, it's exciting. This is a new flavor in Baskin-Robbins, man, right here. Not even Rocky Road, whatever you want it to be. So uh, Titus chapter 2. Verses 11 through 14. Now remember, tonight we're talking about self-control. And your life is going to be so much more happy being self-controlled. I guarantee it. Like Louisiana hot sauce. I guarantee it. Put it on anything. Titus 2, 11 through 14. I'm still here in pages. I knew Titus was going to be rough. They're saying, is that even in the Bible, Randy? Yes, it is. It's in here. It's next to filet mignon. I'm oh, sorry, filet You know, I start thinking about steak and it just comes out. Titus 2, 11 through 14. New Testament. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live, oh my goodness, this is in the Bible, self-control. Wow. Upright and godly lives in this present age. Verse 13. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ who give himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager, that's us, to do what's good. We should be eager to do what's good. And now you know I like definitions, so I said eager. Yeah, I don't know if I exactly know what eager means. So Ed, we're going to find out what eager means. Eager means wanting to do or have something very much. There we go, man. That's okay. Now listen, Richard says I pick on him all the time. And he just drew some big attention to himself. Now I used to carry a ball peen hammer under the pulpit so I'm going to have to bring it back specifically for phones that go off while I am speaking I almost got a sunburn from how red his face was almost it's still going so God has placed in you a person called the Holy Spirit to help be self-controlled, are you eager? Now, the beauty of God, when you get saved, He places the Holy Spirit inside of you to help you be self-controlled. Are you eager? So let's go to Galatians and kind of back all this up with what this self-control is talking about. So Galatians 5, and we're going to be in Galatians 5, uh, 22 through 25 to kind of 
put a bow on this Holy Spirit thing so it kind of gets into your mind. You know, God said He's not going to leave you as an orphan, but He'll send the Holy Spirit to be your... Richard, welcome back. <laughs> hey, our, our international television audience around the world, Richard is back. <laughs> and his phone is off. Awesome, great, excellent. Oh yeah, I'll milk that guy. Galatians 5, 22 through 25. Galatians 5, 22 through 25. And I'm just going to skip the other eight and go to nine here. But the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. You can study the other ones. But the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a tempo. The Holy Spirit knows exactly where you're supposed to be every single day. So that's why it's so vital to be in self-control because then the Holy Spirit can guide you, keep you in step with what God wants. Yeah. Eagerness keeps us self-controlled because we want to stay in step with the Holy Spirit. So when I wake up in the morning and I'm eager to be self-controlled and controlled by the Holy Spirit, man, I'm just chomping at the bit for God to use me to do something. Amen? And that doesn't mean I don't go to work. That doesn't mean I go, go and do my job, but it opens the door for God to bring somebody across my path. There you go. Amen? Amen? So let's go to 2 Peter. We're, we're just going to lay some foundation, put in some walls here, do some wiring, some sheetrock. Oh, we'll put in a toilet for you. We, we know you need convenience. We're, we're just going to build a house out of the Word. Amen? Yeah. So let's go to 2 Peter um, chapter 1. Now remember, this is in 1 Peter. You're going to be in 1 Peter. I'm in 2 Peter. This is uh, 2 Peter Chapter 1, if some of you are struggling with finding that, go to the front of your Bible, and that will show you the page where that chapter starts. So we're going to be in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. Now remember, we're talking about self-control. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge, oh, here we go, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, there's that eager. Man, I'm eager to have self-control. Perseverance and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and mutual affection and love. Verse 8, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. The worst thing you can be as a Christian is ineffective and unproductive. That's not a criticism of you. You just won't be happy. It's, you're not designed to not be productive. You're not designed to not be effective. You are Satan's worst nightmare. I mean, as soon as you wake up in the morning and you're under self-control, he's going, I cannot wait till they go to bed tonight. That, that's, that's who you are. The moment you step out of bed, man, the enemy's just going, this is going to be a bad day because Patty and Leonard, they went to that service on Saturday night again. And we told them not to. And they just aren't listening. <laughs> Verse 9 But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sin. It's so hard when we lose self control because we go blind to the enemy's schemes again. Have you ever been blindsided? Ever had something come out of nowhere? God has not designed you to be blindsided. Yeah. 
He's designed you to be alert and aware, especially when Pete's running a backo and you're standing around. Because <laughs> I've been there when Pete's running a backo and I was aware. Stay out of the way, right? That's right. That's right. See, you don't think I know all this stuff, and I, I know a little. I know a little about Pete. Too much. Verse 10, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Oh, my goodness. Chris, he has said, will never stumble. Now, Chris might not come back again, but I think Chris and I like each other. We shook our hands, and this is a good guy. Amen? So he's he not going to worry about Randy talking to him in church. But man, is it so awesome that it says you will never stumble. What's up with that, Willis? <laughs> I just have fun. That's just, I just have fun. I'm glad you guys came so I could have fun. And you will receive a rich welcome, verse 11, into eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Self-control protects you from being ineffective and unproductive. Once you say, God, I give you control, Holy Spirit, I want to be self-controlled, you have this protection package that keeps you from being ineffective and unproductive. I'm addicted to seeing people saved, but I'm more addicted to pouring into other people, and I'm not even around if people are getting saved. That's what's even more powerful. I can help somebody catch a fish and hand it to them, but I'd rather give them a pole right. and some bait and then they catch fish on their own, right? That's what you're designed to do is to help people learn to be fishers of men. It's fun. Self-control protects you from being ineffective and unproductive and helps you be effective and productive. Scripture warns us in the end times, which we're living in, the love of most will grow cold and the church will become lukewarm. This is in the Bible. The love of most will grow cold and the church will become lukewarm and then we'll just start saying, I don't like people. I don't want to be around anybody. And you, you got to be careful because God's in the people business. But as we become lukewarm, we isolate ourselves. This will open the door worldwide for a form of godliness, but no self-control. See, the world's not going to be anti-God. It's going to be anti-Christ. See, everybody will say, God bless this, God bless that. that that's not the problem. They won't be anti-God, they'll be anti-Christ. Because once you start following Christ, it requires self-control. But built inside of you is the comforter, is the counselor. Just before you start to say something, you're going to regret. Time out. Go put yourself in the corner. Take a time out. Walk away. Boy, I love that silence, man. That is, that's gorgeous. So let's go to 2 Timothy. You mean, Randy, this, the, the Bible talks about the end times and it pertains to self-control? Aren't you glad you came? You're going to learn some end time prophecy with the word self-control. And it's not talking about the unsaved. It's talking about us. So 2 Timothy, not 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verses 1 through 5. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. Now I want you to 
know something here. This is not talking about the unsaved. This scripture is talking about the lukewarm church. So just get that in your mind. This, this isn't talking about the unsaved. It's talking about us. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control. Brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, conceited lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. Now, Randy, that sounds like the world to me. Here we go. Here, here's the punchline. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and this, this hurts right here, have nothing to do with such people. Well, Randy, aren't we supposed to be reaching people? Yes, but you've got to be very careful because bad company corrupts good character. Yes. Yes. You've got to be very careful that you're strong enough, you're healthy enough to get around people that are backslidden, that people that have critical spirits, people, the Bible says the love of most will grow cold and the church will begin to betray and hate each other. Yeah. So you've got to be very careful when you go into that environment that you're full and that you're not going to lose control if somebody that calls themselves a Christian starts to attack you. The worst thing you can do is defend yourself. So many of you, that chip on your shoulder, I'm never going to let anybody dominate me again. <clears throat> Boy, you've ripped some people's heads off and puked down their neck. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> am, am I telling the truth? Yeah. And the reason you did that, because of the injury. <clears throat> Don't do that anymore. Call me, text me. Randy, I almost ripped their head off. Okay, we'll use the word spit down their neck. <laughs> we'll, we'll just PG it a little bit. PG-13, all right? These are people that have a form of godliness, but deny its power, have nothing to do with such people. Because you, you gotta be careful. Because the Bible says, do not cast your pearls before swine. Yeah. Now, your pearl in the Hebrew means spiritual truth. So Chris and I are out evangelizing. And all of a sudden, we run into some people. And if Chris and I keep giving them spiritual truth, the Bible says they'll turn and devour us. God doesn't want us into that confrontation. We shake the dust off our feet and we move along. You get that? Some of you have tried to ram spiritual things down people's throat and you got the butt whooping, not them. Yeah. Was that in the Bible too, butt whooping? Seven sons of Sceva. Yeah. Uh, they're out messing around with Jesus' name. One little demon-possessed person stripped them all three, all seven, butt naked, beat them bloody, and they ran home naked, bloody, beat up. In Jesus' name. You know why? Because they had a form of godliness, but they had no wattage in their cottage. And Richard left again. I just need the studio audience to know. He left. It's, it's rough in here, you know, in the international audience. The lost are not the problem. They're like sheep without a shepherd. Richard's back. Let's give him a hand. I, I, I got to have Richard here. I can't preach, man. Judy's phone. International congregation. This is Pastor Judy. She just turned her phone on. Wow. Man. I told Missy this was going to be a good message. <laughs> 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 
man. What what would we do? What did we do before cell phones, man? Amen. The lost are not the problem. They are like sheep without a shepherd. The problem is Jesus laborers do not have self-control. Many of you should be teachers by now. Should be teachers by now. Ask yourself, were you eager this week for the kingdom of God or the things of the world? What were you eager for this week? The things of the world or the kingdom of God? That's, that's not to criticize you. It's not to beat you up. But on a daily basis, you better do an inspection of what's on your mind. What's on your mind when you wake up in the morning because you need to have it under self-control. Mm-hmm. Many of you should be teachers by now. Ask yourself, what were you eager for this week? The kingdom of God or the things of the world? Self-control will always help you fan into flame the gift of God in you. So let's go to 2 Timothy. Back this up with some scripture. and We're going to go to 2 Timothy Just right back in chapter 1. So we were in chapter 3. Timothy was considered Paul's son in the faith. And um, here's the multiplication. Here's Paul pouring his life into Timothy. And now we're reading this, you know, 2,000 years later. 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 7. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. That's why it's important to be in a house church. That's why it's important to be in a small group of people that you can trust. So if you are feeling down, they can lay hands on you. Amen. Amen. They can bless you. They can encourage you. For the spirit God give us does not make us timid. Man, when we're in the world, we're psychos. We're complete crazy people. And then we get saved. Oh, I don't want to witness to somebody. They might get offended. And you were this terrorizer in the world. Do anything. Especially if somebody messed with you or messed with your kid or messed with your family. Just just rip them up. But now that you're safe, oh, I, I'm busy. Please excuse me. I, I, yeah. Uh. <laughs> but boy, when you were in the world dating somebody, woo Man, you're at 500 miles. 500 miles. Here's a flower. Love you. 500 miles back. Now we can't even get you off the couch. Oh, Jesus. He he loved me. Somebody going to give you $1,000? Man, you're already in Tennessee. But be eager for Jesus that gives you eternal life. Oh, you know, I just don't feel like it today. I, you know, I'm just, I'm just not into it today. Are you getting what I'm cooking? Yeah. yeah. All right. I know you're smart people. Self-control through the power of the Holy Spirit helps you to be a living sacrifice so you can accomplish God's perfect will for your lifetime. This is a lifetime commitment. You can't just be on fire for a month. You just can't get saved and be on fire for a few weeks. It's a lifetime commitment. Well, is that in the Bible too? Well, let's look at Romans. Let's go to Romans. Remember, if you lived to 60 years old, you spent 20 years sleeping. 60 years old, you've spent 20 years of your life sleeping. And all I'm asking you is to give God one hour a week in your home or somebody else's home and just love on them. And you're going to sleep 20 years? 
and ball and squall when little old Randy asks you for an hour a week? I'm going to let that marinate a little bit. Boil them over. Marinate. Yeah, it gets a little hot in the kitchen sometimes. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Man, I just kept writing stuff down today. Praise God. Romans 12, 1 through 2. Romans 12, that's a good sound. That's a good sound of pages. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. <coughs> Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. God has a perfect will. And man, when you're in your wheelhouse and you're swinging that bat and it's just knocking that ball out of the park, that means changing people's lives through Jesus. It, there's nothing like it. There's, that's why I want all of you doing that. That's why I want everybody in a house church or starting one because you've got to get addicted to self-control which leads to empowering people. You're, you're designed to be a cheerleader, man. You're designed, no matter how you feel, what you look like, what lives in you is rah, rah, boom, boom. Rah, rah, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. You just got to get self-control. Let the Lord heal you, restore you, fill you up. Chris will walk into places that if I walked in there, it, it's over, man. Chris, Chris is smiling, going, little old Randy ain't walking in there. But Chris doesn't know I've been in San Jose with a nine millimeter stuffed in my face. And Chris, the pastor that brought me to speak to all these gang members, got in his car and left me there. <laughs> pastor, where are you going and why are your, and why are your pants all wet down there? <laughs> So, so don't judge the book by the cover. Randy has preached in bars and had people get radically saved. But Chris is specially designed to walk through specific doors. And when the power of God through him touches people, God will get all the glory. Yes. Because they'll say, Chris, I know you, I know your past, and boy, Jesus looks good on you. Amen. Randy, you're going to run Chris off. No, I'm not. He already been in house church for six weeks, man. Yeah, awesome. He already been thumping the devil bad. <laughs> if he never came on Saturday... I would even be more excited about him because Sam would tell me how awesome he is. That's good. See, now what's happening is people have been already in house church to me for weeks and then they come here. See where the old structure, Tony? You have to come here. You have to come here on Sunday. You have to be here. No. no. That, that's, that's not the priority. Going and making disciples is the priority. Mm -hmm. Yes. Remember, you are in a race. Remember, you are in a race. You're a spiritual athlete in a flesh body. You have to have self-control to succeed. It will take strict training to finish the race. Now, I'm blessed because I train people for a living. That's what I do for a profession. I push people physically five days a week to their max and beyond. So it kind of carries over in here. I'm going to push on you a little bit. I'm going to push on you beyond what you think you can do because I know you can do it. So 
you're a spiritual athlete, athlete in a flesh body, it will take strict training. You mean strict trainings in the Bible too, Rick? Oh yeah, it's uh -huh. it's. It, you should read this thing, man. It's only sixty six little books, but it will kick your behind. It does mine all the time. First Corinthians chapter nine. First Corinthians chapter nine. All these house churches are going to have a lot of scripture this week. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. We're talking about strict training. It's in the Bible. It's not 2 Corinthians. It's 1 Corinthians. Hey, Richard, I'm glad you could stay. Awesome. Good job, man. I guess I am got to bring that ball peen hammer though. Two phones in one night. <laughs> That'll teach them. First Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You mean, Randy, if I don't go into strict training, I have the ability to disqualify myself? Hmm, Bernie, we've been talking about this. See, you've got to be very careful to put extreme effort into your relationship with Christ. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to be the person. And I've seen this over the years. These highly gifted people get saved. They get on fire. Way more gifted than Randy. Way more gifted than anything I could do. And guess what? I've even watched them preach to other people. And then boom, they're gone. I personally know a pastor that had a church of 3,000 people. He stepped away from his church, wants nothing to do with church. 3,000 members will not even go to church anymore. Does not want to participate at all. Can you imagine, Sean, when his church got to 3,000, if he had 300 house churches? So here's the pastor with the church of 3,000. Can you imagine if he had 300 house churches? But what's happened is we built this structure, this brick and mortar on Sunday morning that eats these guys alive. You know the couple that we might be contacting in Vancouver? Former pastors. And all of a sudden, Leonard, the Lord spoke to me, there's thousands of pastors not even going to church anymore. And guess what, Chris? We're going to go get them. Amen. We're going to go get them. The guy with 3,000 member church, Mike, his wife doesn't even go to church anymore. I don't want them to be disqualified. No. Right? Okay. He might see me showing up on his doorstep one of these days. Oh, no, not Randy. <laughs> he always happy about Jesus. <laughs> okay. We are watching in 2022 a lack of self-control disqualifying people who actually acknowledge Jesus. Where I'm watching it all the time. People that actually acknowledge Jesus and preach to other people, Mark, they're just gone. Just completely gone. 
And then, well, I, I still read my Bible, but I, I just don't want to participate in anything. Mm -hmm. No, the Bible says you're a living stone fitted together in the house of God. We need each other. We need each other. I need you guys. Who have preached to others. But their lack of self-discipline has created inconsistency. So they no longer remain in strict training. It's time you have the personal trainer inside you 24-7, the Holy Spirit. You need to tap into the personal trainer inside of you. Don't miss your daily workouts. Following Christ is a daily workout. From the moment you wake up in the morning, that is what's on your mind. How am I pleasing Jesus today? Right. The money will come. The job will come. Like I always say, if you have a roof over your head, 25 cents in your pocket, and mac and cheese, you're in the top 5% of the wealthiest people in the world. 80% yeah. of the world <laughs> makes less than $300 a month. 1.5 billion people make less than 25 cents a day. There's a lot of people that would trade places with you in a second. In a second. It's time you have the personal trainer inside you, the Holy Spirit. Don't miss your daily workouts without self-control. You will have a form of godliness, but no power. It's your choice, no excuses. God has designed you to be a winner. And the prize is eternity in the presence of God's love through Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit. You are a winner. Keep running the race. You're a winner. That's why you get so frustrated when you're not being obedient and you start getting agitated with people. You start isolating because you're designed to be a winner. You're designed to be successful, but that's in winning people to Jesus. You can have all the money. Trust me, during the week, I spend time with some of the wealthiest people in our community. And guess what? Money can buy them bed, a bed, but it doesn't buy them rest. You got to be very careful because you think, if I could just get more, if I could just get this, I would be happy. Let me give you some advice. Be happy where you're at. The word joy means content. The joy of the Lord is your strength. If you win a soul for Jesus, wow. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Good time for altar call. Amen? Amen. So we're going to pray a prayer. The Bible says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you'll be saved. Now the Bible says the time we're living in, God's going to pour out His Spirit on all the earth, and you'll just call on the name of Jesus and you'll be saved. So we're going to pray this prayer, and you're going to receive Christ all over the world. And the Holy Spirit's going to come to live in you to be your teacher, your comforter, um, your advocate. So let's pray this prayer here in the sanctuary and then around the world this week. So just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, believe I believe that you hung on a cross and died and paid for my sins. Jesus, I believe that you rose again on the third day. Jesus, I ask you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I love you. Amen. Now, amen. The Lord bless you. Now, for 26 months, I've been saying, put the heart emoji, let us know. Well, that's changed. New sheriff in town. The heart emoji now is, if you're opening a house church, or you've already opened a house church, we have 1,260 people
that will watch this service this week because it's going to be on their Facebook page or the YouTube channel. Let them know. 1,260 followers and subscribers. So I'm, I'm triple dog daring you. Put your tongue on the pole, man. You got, you got to watch the movie. You need, you've been watching me for two years. You've been watching me for a year. It's time for you to open your home, open a house church, or go to somebody else's. By the time this service is on for two weeks, 2,400 people will watch this service in the next two weeks. So it's time for you to put the heart emoji on there that says, Randy, I've opened a house church or I'm going to open one. Amen? Because we need to be praying for you. No excuses. Your home or someone you know's home. Watch the video. Have a discussion about it. People will be saved and they'll be healed in your house or their house. We'll do the heavy lifting. You just open the house. You are God's servant. Open your home. Let God use it to bring in the harvest. One hour a week. Triple dog dare. One hour a week. Start there. Your house or somebody else's house. Love you. Have an awesome week. We'll see you next week. Amen.